All right, it looks like we're live. What's up, everyone? My name's Chad Peters, and this is the X Groove live stream. Got to close one more window because I always forget. I think I got everything running. Cool. All right, we're going to start this off with some drumming, then we're going to get into some four pedal lessons today. I'm really excited for this because this is what I love to do. This is what I've striven for for the last 10 years, trying to figure out how to do the... Amongst other things. But let's go. good today what's up Serge how you doing man glad to see you just getting a little warmed up I love coming out with a little bit of drumming I wish I could do this a little more subtly and kind of get the stream up and then just I'm already playing I'm gonna figure some stuff out with the stream a lot of complicated stuff a lot of moving parts ah y'all what's up dude don't worry man I was checking out a little bit of the Thomas Lang stuff dude how are you man I'm good uh, yeah, so you're going to have to tell me uh, which part of Moon Rock are you struggling with or which part are you trying to work on because I know there's the main groove with that one where he's doing like... You know what I mean? So he's kind of doing a triplet groove there but throwing some uh, 32nd note or 16th note triplets in there. Yeah, that one. Okay. And then there's that there's that middle part I was looking at. I didn't get a chance to really catch the rhythm, but where he's going like Kind of just winging it a little bit there, but 
basically on that he's doing uh just a triplet groove uh let me slow this let me turn the metronome off because i'm going up too fast for that but he's just so you can kind of get the bass idea with that just and then we'll work on the the, the 16th note aspect Is it is it the um is it that flurry part where he's doing the Okay, so what we could do is break that down. Oh, Serge, man. Sorry to hear that, dude. Uh actually, we had something going around my house as well recently. There were uh my ex-wife and kids were sick and stuff like that, so um, so I hope you feel better, man. Drink lots of water, right? Lots of TV. Just chill on the couch. Relax. Um, but, yeah, I all uh, – so basically we'll have to break that down into an exercise. If you could do the same idea with your hands, right? <laughs> Get your hands doing the same idea, right? So, hold on, let me see. I could do it fast enough with my right and left leg, but first. <clears throat> so, you mean you have a hard time doing the double bass aspect? Like, because you could do like. Okay, and then we, I would, I would just in general start it slow like this. Um, you know what, dude? Um, so I can get an eye of what you're doing. If, if you can, send me a video, uh, like a, just a little scratch video you playing it on Instagram or Facebook. Um, just throw it in my DM so I can kind of see what you're talking about. Um, and I can, I'll send you a, a little scratch video on how to kind of work it out or some kind of exercise to help get your coordination smoothing out. Cause it's usually what I found out anything on the drums you're struggling with is usually like a, there's just a little stickiness in, in the, in the coordination idea. So if we could figure that out and break it down to that simpler idea and we can work on that isolated, you'll, you'll be able to play it. I promise. It's it's literally just get your feet going, you know. <laughs> I feel like my leg, I feel like my feet are a little sticky right there. Yeah, so like I would break that down into an exercise for you. And like I said, if you can get your hands going, let's take your feet and just. Yeah, dude, like I said, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, dude. Literally just a little camera video. I don't care what it looks like as long as I can see what your body mechanics look like. That's what I want to see because usually it could be a it could be an imbalance in the way you've positioned your drum set. And I've seen that happen a lot because if your body, if your left foot's not underneath you the same way the right one is, you're going to actually have a hard time keeping the balance when you get into the double bass, right? You're going to be kind of leaning. That'll throw you off hardcore. So like I said, show me a picture of your drum set and then give me a video of you playing the thing and, and, and I'll uh, help you tweak it a little bit. But. I'm excited to get into our drum lesson today because I'm talking about four pedals and it's something I really love to do is all I've really kind of been working on the last 10 years is trying to figure this out and doing different things with the four pedals and trying to make it into a universal style that you could play within music and stuff. Oh, you're welcome, dude. Anytime. Just hit me up. 
Um, so yeah, doing some four pedal stuff. It's not, at least in the beginning stages, it's not as hard as it seems because I'm going to explain it in a very simple way. But even in the early stage of this, it adds a really cool ostinato effect. And you can do some really cool hand patterns and stuff over it. So jumping into it, let me get to the first exercise here. All right. <coughs> so what we're going to do is actually the idea, uh, to me, a prerequisite for being able to play the four pedals is being able to play a basic double bass groove. Because that's all we're going to be doing here in the first exercise is 16th notes, right? So if you look at the... If you look at the music right here, you can see that it's just a basic 16 note pattern. You got your right, left, right, left, back beat, and then your right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. It's just this. Okay? Now, taking that same alternating 16th note pattern, all we're gonna do is switch it over to two kicks and then two hi hats. Still keeping. What do you mean doubles? Oh, Kenyo, what's up? I didn't, uh, not, yeah, thanks for joining me. What do you mean uh, doubles, like double bass or double strokes? And thanks for joining in, Kenyo. Appreciate it, man. Um, so we're just getting into some four pedal stuff. We're gonna, but like I was talking about, double bass is the prerequisite for this. Um, let me know what you mean by doubles, and I'll get to some explaining of that as well. But real quick, so, uh, oh, double strokes. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to get into actually some double strokes here in the second portion of the lesson, okay? And, I, and I'll show you why it's – it's and I don't do them um, – so if, if you look at real quick, I don't do double strokes like – you could do a little bit of that. Okay, so I don't, I don't really typically work on them as fast, but what I do is a slower double stroke. Okay, so I do them in a more groovy context versus I have to warm up to those. I don't. And I know if you're if you're doing like the death metal stuff that everyone's doing these days with the triggers, they do like really tiny little like double strokes and stuff. Um, but I'll talk about the double strokes here in a minute and how I use them and whatnot. We'll get to some paradiddles on the feet as well. So, okay, getting into this alternating pattern, we're doing two kicks, right, left. And then two kick or two hi hats, right, left, okay? And it looks like this. It's basically a double bass groove just over the four pedals. Okay, so we go like this right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. It's a really cool idea, and it, I think I think you just get a second hi hat, put it on your right side, and you will be doing this pretty easily if you can handle a basic double stroke. I mean, a double bass uh, drum riff. Ah, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting lost over here. Okay, but basically that's the prerequisite to all of this. What I'm doing. This is a bass idea. Okay, and what we're gonna do now is take that same idea, and this is what I like about the three the three patterns that I got here. Are really cool for this reason. Okay, so we have that basic alternating pattern against the four pedals. What we're going to do now is shift it a 16th note, and we're going to get an upbeat kind of samba-ish feel like this. Right? So it's going to take that same alternating 16th note pattern. We're just going to shift it right like this, okay? So instead of going two kicks, two hi-hats, we're going to go one kick, and then we're going to start with the left on the hi-hat. Okay, if you look at it from here, we're going right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So it's the same alternating pattern, but we're just shifting it a little bit and orchestrating it differently. But the cool part about it is you get a completely different feel, and it goes like this. Ah, uh, 
Thanks, Ayal, man. I really love that one. And literally, I, I feel like if you just got a second hi-hat and tried it, you'd be surprised how easy that that first idea of four pedals is. And I've been playing it since I started doing this 12 years ago. It was like the first thing I did when I got the four pedals. I was like, whoa, I could do this. Like, <laughs> So, yeah, but thanks, man. And then, uh, and then doing that offbeat thing, like I said, if you could get the samba idea... It's the same idea and it's really cool. <clears throat> and it just doesn't really, you don't have to up your coordination much at all. Straight. So I'll do a little switch. I'll go straight on and then I'll do the upbeat feel real quick and just do a little backbeat idea. Right? Okay, so it's kind of a cool little idea. We get that little kind of shift in it, but all we're doing is alternating 16th notes, okay? You can get a lot of play out of that. So, I'm a, so if I switch it every four, it's an idea. If I switch it every uh, two measures, it's an idea. And then we get into switching it every measure, and then every switch in every half measure. And then when you start switching every quarter note, it gets really interesting. And let me see if I can pull that off real quick, actually. Something like that. Hold on, watch this. Yeah, that's it, but I gotta see if I can hold that real quick. I got to work on that one. I'll get that in a minute. That was every half measure. We're going to work that, that other one. Ah, I get it. I swear if I could play it faster. We'll work on that one later. I'll get that for the next run. Uh, hang on one quick second. Camera shut off at 20 minutes on top. All right. So, Kenyo, you still with me, yo? Or Kino, sorry, not Kenyo. Because we're going to get into some double strokes. All right. Sorry, I got a timer for my cameras right there. All right. So we got that same idea, right? We're doing alternating 16th notes over the four paddles. And then we go from a straight downbeat aspect we're to an upbeat feel. Okay, and it's got like a double stroke sound already because we're going two kicks, two hi-hats, two kicks, two hi-hats, right? So this is where double strokes kind of come into play as well, and I think it's a really cool concept here, okay? So if we look at it, we're just doing – this one's over two pedals for right now, and I'll show you the four in a second, but we got two kicks on the right, two hi-hats, two kicks. Okay, and I'm going to just play a backbeat, and then I'm going to kind of do a little bit of stuff over top of it to show you that when you get these uh, very simple ostinatos that have like a static feel, you could do a lot of cool rhythms over them and get away with all kinds of different uh, accents and, and polyrhythms and such because the rhythm's static. Okay, it's not, it doesn't have really much of a melody to it, but it's a very easy rhythm to kind of go along with. And I'll show you what I mean. We'll, we'll do this right now. Double strokes, nothing fast, we're just playing 16th notes, or sorry, I'm playing more so like 8th notes, I think, at 185, right, nice feel, it's just pretty, it's just got a nice alternating,
Okay? So it's got the cool thing about this, and in, in all of the patterns here, are gonna, you're going to see why I love this and which it, why this is like the basis of the four pedals that I do. The, the double strokes that I was just do doing also emulate the same sound as the alternating one. So we have... Right? Okay. How do you get your legs and hands to play independently so comfortably? Hours and hours and years and years of playing the same stuff, to be honest. There is no shortcut to that. I swear the only shortcut is playing more hours in a day. You know, and, and like in, in, in immersing yourself in the idea of this. And don't get me wrong, when I first started playing, um, <clears throat> and I'll actually show you uh, how I go about each and every ostinato almost from the get go. If I'm working on some new pattern, the first thing I do is get my hands playing eighth notes or 16 notes, however tempo you want to look at it, but just. <laughs> So no matter what I'm doing, and, and it's actually, I have a video on my um, on my YouTube channel called Independence 101, and it's literally how I start almost every complicated thing that I'm doing with my feet, no matter what it is, like I'm doing flam taps, right? Starting with eighth notes on the snare drum to get comfortable. And we just do that, like, for two to three minutes at a time, sometimes five if I feel like really like pushing something heavy, okay? But, okay, and then what we do is we stop and try 16th notes. A lot of times I start with the hands before I bring the feet in or vice versa. So what we do is that, right? We start with eighth notes, get comfortable with the ostinato and our hands being, or everything playing at once. And the funny thing about independence is the limbs are actually quite dependent on each other. And you'll start to see that as you move through it because I play on top and in between the ostinato, like I weave my rhythms through it. So that rhythm on the feet, they all have to still stay together and you just kind of learn to play around it and like kind of roll through them and stuff like that, okay? But after you're comfortable with eighth and 16th notes, oh, thank you, man, appreciate it. So after you're comfortable with eighth and 16th notes on their own, what we do then is mix eighth and 16th notes over the ostinato like this. Okay, so once you start to mix them, you start to feel that independence aspect that you're looking for. Your mind starts to be able to move the hands a little bit more freely. And then the idea of it is to switch them closer together doing the every half measure. Okay. And then what we do is start moving that idea around the toms, and you'll start to feel your independence be like come alive. So like this. Kind of a cool idea. It, it, it seems like independence, and that's what I mean. Like, it, it's independent in a sense, but at the same time, they're like dependent on each other. It, if you stay within that rhythm of the feet and the hands, it, it, it makes this, this musical aspect, okay? So try to think of it a little bit more, less of independence and in them kind of just weaving with each other. It, it's really interesting concept. Okay, but I do some pretty tricky ostinatos, and I can tell you that every ostinato I've ever worked on started like that. And if it's not sixteenth notes, it's usually or it's usually single strokes or double strokes. And I'll show you. I got that uh, my flam accent pattern. Sorry, my. Sh Okay. 
So we'll do the same thing and then start playing around with it. I feel like my flam accent's been a little uh, sticky for me. acting funny for me but that's usually like my mainstay right there but it's got a weird balance too because but we could do flam accents like this different things you could do but I always start with eighth notes and then sixteenth notes and such and begin to mix rudiments in there and double strokes and such okay all right so real quick let's kind of get on to this double stroke one so we sh I showed you double strokes we're just doing on the beat right now doing the same thing we did with the alternating sixteenths we're gonna shift it a sixteenth note and give it that samba feel and we're gonna do this by like this, okay? So we have a, our kick drum here on the right, and then we're gonna go left, left, and then right, right. So we're, so it, it's actually a samba if you do, or. Right, so, but this one, we're just adding the double stroke on the hi-hat and doing the same idea. What's up, Muhammad? How you doing, man? I can't tell what that symbol is. Is that a question mark? <laughs> or does it look like a glass? It's tiny on my screen. It's like, it's like <laughs> how you doing, man? Oh, how you doing, bro? Do you play drums as well? We're getting into some pretty uh, pretty tricky stuff today. <clears throat> so where are you from? Oh, okay, I don't know if they have uh, the interpreter. Uh, I know Serge uses uh, the, ah, what do you call it, Serge? The, it's the interpreter, but the subtitles. Yeah, I will. I'm going to, uh, so I'll, I'll get in. Let me finish this part of the lesson. And then uh, I got one more, which will actually play into the idea of how I go about my legs and stuff, dude. So so let's do this real quick. I'll play the offbeat samba. Oh, okay. Oh, I, di I didn't know what you mean. You said I do not understand you, so I was kind of curious. Um, do you not understand the drumming? Is that what you mean? But yeah, so we're going to do this offbeat double strokes, giving you a samba-ish idea. And we're going to do the same thing there, I y'all. I'll even play, I'll show you how I mix and get the, the independence with the hands over top. No, I am not. I'm not religious at all, to be honest. I have, uh, I'm just me. Why are you? Uh, 
All right, but check it out. I y'all, Sergi, you guys catch that with the whole double strokes. We got the offbeat, or we got the on beat. And then I have the upbeat feel as well. I'll have to try that, dude. But let's see if we can mix them a little bit. So we'll go. Kind of getting a little bit of a mix of the idea in there. And then, like I said, we can start pushing it a little closer together. Okay. Now... <sighs> Okay, man, uh, write me a book, dude. <laughs> Do you have any questions about drumming, Muhammad? All right, so, all right, so, I y'all, uh, what kind of um, techniques do you want to uh, learn about the legs? How like I like I go about double bass. We can get in like I said, we can get the double strokes. Um, a lot of it comes with because I'll I'll, fi I'll finish the lesson in a minute after we get over this. So I have a lot of things that I've done to develop the footwork, and it usually revolves around breaking it down first. Just That was sometimes a okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that was getting a little bit too much for me. Sorry. All right, hello, friend. You should listen to Laco Tyfe and listen to their grooves. These bit planes are getting too boring. What bit planes? What do you mean? Big greetings and listen to Laco Tyfe. That was something of a voice acting. I have an automatic translation voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get you, dude. Yeah, the uh, the overdubbing. That's what I, I couldn't think of the name for it. But I appreciate that, Serge. Thank you, man. All right, dude. So, uh, y'all, let's uh, let's talk about this. So, I'm going to actually, I'm going to show you one quick thing. I'm going to get into the next lesson portion and I'll show you this is how it all kind of relates and how I've developed the flow to the idea. So we are going to talk about paradiddles on the feet. This is actually my favorite one because you get the mix. You get the same sound as the other two aspects, but you're getting a mix of the hi-hat aspect. You're getting the dual hi-hats and then you're also getting the splashing effect from the from the double strokes instead of Okay, so if you look at the pattern, we have right, left, right, right, and it's going to go right, left, right, right on the hi-hat, then left, right, left, left on the other hi-hat. So like this. And again, and again, it has that same static feel of boom, 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 as the other two grooves, okay? Really cool. So let me play that for you, and then we'll talk about one last thing with it, which you already probably know what I'm going to get into. So. What do you mean the flat beats? You don't like the flat beats, but the samba's okay? 
But how are they flat? That's what I don't understand. looking at this lesson or my other lessons? But yeah, I like to think they're pretty interesting, so, you know, I appreciate the constructive criticism, so I will try to make them a little less flat. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, so this next portion, what I'm doing with the paradiddles on the feet, I'll give you the samba feel. So this is actually my favorite thing to do with the drumming, or the four pedals, is like at least with the uh, paradiddle, we're going to do the upbeat feel again and shift it a 16th note. So if you look at it over here, we have the right foot, and then we're going to diddle the left hi-hat. Right, left, left, and then we're going to snap over and go right, left, right, right, okay? So we're shifting that paradiddle pattern from the static downbeat feel, right, or the, and we're going to upbeat it with the samba feel. like I'm going to speed this up just a tiny bit because sometimes with the with the four pedals the kick drums aren't always where they're supposed to be. So check it out. We go like this. Uh, okay, glad you're back, all y'all. So you, you probably like this one. I'm going into the paradiddles and this is kind of relating to how I deal with my legs and the techniques with the legs. Uh, so I'm going to be doing an offbeat paradiddle creating that samba feel that we did before. Okay. <coughs> One quick second again. I gotta reset these cameras. They shut off at 20 minutes. And it's a pain in the butt. Gonna give me some new cameras here soon. All right. Oh, uh, TZ, you like the cowbell? Well, cool. I'll throw some cowbell in there for you right now when I do the offbeat paradiddles for a samba. Let's check it out. I'm glad you like it. Actually, I pulled out the cowbells the other day or the other week for somebody else, and I, it, it's been having a blast, but I haven't used it in so long. But. but again, the flat beats like you were talking about, it plays a role in the process of groove because we go from a downbeat to an upbeat feel, actually, and that's where we start creating more groove and less of a flat beat, like you were saying. And I do agree that the downbeat is a static feel. It's meant to be a – it's almost like – uh, it's got a certain sp a specific pulse. And then the, uh, the samba has the same pulse, just on an upbeat, so it gets a little bit of a different groove. But when we start mixing the down and upbeat, we get more groove to the whole aspect. So let's see if we can mix a little bit of down and upbeat with these paradiddles.
So try to get I try to get that switch in there as much as I could. But you see, you go down beat for a certain feel and up beat, and you start to actually get a different style of groove. You get those kind of triple kicks in there going like da 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 Sorry, real quick. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Actually, the whole the whole Latin clave thing, uh, there's so many things to do around that and, and whatnot. Um, I'm not a big Latin clave guy, so don't ask me to play that one because I'll bomb it. When I do the clave stuff, I, I would say I have the idea in my head, but I don't exactly play the clave. What's up, new? How you doing? having a good time. I'm enjoying it. I love doing the live streaming. I'm here doing lessons. Any questions you got about drumming or whatever? <sighs> where are you from? Yo, TZ, where are you from also? What are Orient rhythms? Yo, what's up, Michael? Yeah, you want to know a little bit about me? That's cool. I'm from Israel, I actually have a um, a student. His family's from Israel and whatnot. So yeah, man, I'm Chad Peters. I'm out in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I am an ambidextrous an ambidextrous extreme drummer. I love using an ambidextrous way of playing, and I use four pedals to create elaborate grooves and such. Damn, you moving all over the place, I all. I'm jealous. I'm trying to get there one day, do some traveling here. Maybe, maybe the YouTube channel will pick up, and I get to do some stuff. Michael, where are you from, dude? But yeah, I love teaching. I love showing people what to do on the drums or like how to, how to get better for yourself. There's always like little tweaks that we all do or that we all need for our own playing. And a lot of times it revolves around breaking things down to a simpler context, and then we build it back up and play the whole groove or whatever coordination you're doing. So that's what I love to do over here, so. <sighs> Hold on. I will check it out. Don't worry, I'm gonna rewatch the stream. I always rewatch my stream and check the chats and stuff like that. Um, and for I y'all, I'm going to get to some more of that Thomas Lang, uh, moon rock for you, but I will check out the task orient rhythms. But yeah, you know, the, uh, I was on Twitch for a while and I'm somebody who's kept putting uh, like crazy Japanese metal and stuff. And I could not follow this stuff for the life of me, at least on the spot. I mean, a uh, waltz. I don't even know what, what the, I'm trying to even like uh, like hear a waltz in my head. I'm thinking of like, I think it's the tango. Oh, is it too hard to hear that? <clears throat> I'm 
trying to think of a waltz, Serge. I'm thinking of just like a. I don't. I don't even know a waltz. Like, uh, I'm picturing it because I had a book where I had a waltz in there. I'm gonna look that up for you, Serge. We're gonna play a waltz next time. <laughs> I feel like that's like old timey stuff, bro. That's not a waltz, but I'm trying to. I can't think of what it is. A four pedal waltz. I got you, dude. You said four pedals, I'm doing it. But I got to hear what a waltz sounds like, and I will get that for you next week for damn sure. Not like uh, traditional or anything, but yeah, I go into the store and putts on them. But I, I actually would like to have like I think it's a marimba, the wooden ones. I think I could do some pretty cool stuff on that one because I like the tone of the wood. And, and it was funny. There's this park in Utah, and they had a wooden marimba or whatever it was. It just like planks of wood, and I could not stop playing this thing. I was just like creating all this stuff and whatnot. But I'm gonna have to get a little side little uh, marimba right here. A little tiny one or something. But, yeah, I would like to play some other kind of percussion stuff, but I don't traditionally play. I'm basically drum set. I play a little guitar and, and bass and stuff like that, but um, I just really like the sound of the toms. and. But, actually, I, I'll, I'll get into a little bit of uh, leg technique for you, too. Dude, I I would. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna have a little marimba just like boom, boom, ding, 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 doing some uh, melodies while I play. But dude, uh, what I was talking about when we talking about with that double bass from Moon Rock, uh, you could st you could try with sixteenth notes as well, just doing a basic one. Ding, ding. Okay, and once you get comfortable with those ideas, it starts to play a role into the triplets as well. It's the same idea. Okay, well, I was accenting more like um, 316 right there, but the term of metronome. Uh, actually, I totally agree with that, TZ. Um, it's an obsession. I can't, I can't stop thinking about it. It's why I'm trying to do this for a living. And, and what I do is, you know, I teach and things. I just can't stop thinking about percussion. Um, I, I mean, it's everywhere around us. When you start driving down the road, you hear people playing music. You hear songs in the store. Then you start to hear rhythms and machines and, and the ticking and, like, little metronomy things everywhere. You'll see me tap into my turn signal as a metronome and such. My kid was actually asking me about that. He's like, what are you doing, Dad? And I was like, oh, just tap into the turn signal. I was playing a rhythm, about, you know, around it and stuff. And he was just like, huh? But it, it's just funny. I hear it everywhere. You hear fans sometimes, like, like a ceiling fans. They start going, like, cat, 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 and, like, creating rhythms. And I'm just like, eh, okay. Really interesting world. I think it's it's just we just get stuck in it, and you can't ever leave. You don't want to, but to me, it's a soul. You know, uh, music keeps us alive. It's part of who we are. It's an expression. So I love it. Yeah, I get you, and that and that's where that's where we have to learn to mix and match, and we break it up into longer stretches. So. If you do the 16th notes and 8th note triplets, we're going. So we want to throw a, a 16th note pattern there towards the end of the measure so that you're kind of spacing it out. You're not doing it so. 
those are too close together. But if we get into the idea of like going like, it gives you, it gives your feet time to reset reset for that next flurry. Okay, you could even space it out to two to two measure ideas, and we'll go like for for longer stretches. So that when I'm learning something like that new. You want to give your body and your mind time to reset for that complicated part that you're doing. So we stretch that. If you're doing the flurry, let's do it every two measures. So we go. Sorry, I did that wrong. Okay, so we're stretching it out a little bit so that you do that flurry and it trips your brain up, but you did it just a short burst and then we set back and get back into the static rhythm of those eighth note triplets. Okay, and then as you get comfortable with that, we can shift it to every, uh, every measure. So we'll go. Okay, so that's how I take on almost, uh, that's the approach I take with almost every uh, idea that I work on. We stretch it out, and then we bring it closer and closer together, and that's when you start developing a little bit more fluency with the idea, and you can start manip, you know, uh, okay, that makes sense to you. So like I said, if it's easier, try it in 16th notes. Triplets are a little funny because they shift lead, If you you know what I mean? We're going... The one quarter note's right, the next quarter note's left, the other quarter note's right, then it's left. So it switches the leads, and when you, depending on where you start that flurry, it kind of throws you off. Yeah, keep trying it, spread it out a little bit more, but I recommend to get the idea a little bit better, straight 16th notes, or 8th notes and 16th. So just, so we'll go. Okay, so like I said, far away at first, get comfortable, we bring it closer, closer, and then closer, okay? And then we just basically doing six stroke rolls. Okay? I'm trying to think I had something on my mind and I can't remember what I was gonna do. <coughs> But yeah, like I said, send me a video of that and, and I'll help you through some stuff. I, I enjoy doing it and kind of, I like watching people's bodies try the coordination and I have to like, kind of like, hmm, I can kind of see the wiring and, and where the things are kind of crisscrossing. Yeah. All right, for sure, man. Thanks, dude. I'll see you next week. Yeah, I think, well, how long has the stream been going? I usually try to go about an hour here. But uh, TZ, what kind of stuff do you play? Is it just kind of basically like Latin stuff or whatnot? I'm going to have to check out some of those bands though and whatnot. Michael, you still with me? New, you still there? Serge, I know you out there. All right, cool, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you sticking around, dude. I always have fun in these live streams. The chat kind of keeps it interesting. I try to do a little bit of lessons, and then we kind of just putz around and try some stuff and whatnot. And every week, uh, I'm nice, dude. Hell yeah. Do you play in a band as well? <clears throat> I haven't played in a band in actually uh, almost 12 years, I think it was. Yeah, as soon as I uh, my last band broke up, I just kind of dove into this uh, idea of four pedals and ambidexterity, and I've been basically working on that for the last 12 years. And basically, the last few years, it kind of came together. Nice, dude. Nice. Kind of miss the band days, uh, but at the same time, I love doing what I do. I just love the big sound that I can create. And Oh, 
R Pro program, what do you use to write drum notes for video? Uh, so I actually use Finale, though. <coughs> oh, thank you, TZ. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, so I use Finale, uh, Surge, but I, I have Cubase Pro, and I just realized that they have um, a music writing program in there as well. So I'm thinking about switching and trying that out. Um, but I've not tried Guitar Pro. I think uh, a friend of mine was using Guitar Pro 8 to do that as well. So it, do, you, do you have that, or do you do that for your drum notation? I'll have to check it out. Because I'm looking for something the easier. Sometimes I don't care for the finale all the way. Uh, I'm looking for something that's easier to input and maybe set up some hot keys and whatnot to make it quicker. <coughs> uh, so I'm using Pearl Drums, uh, TZ. I got the Pearl Reference Series. Uh, in the Inca Gold Burst. And my heads are about six years old. <laughs> but they still sound... I actually like the sound of dead heads. They got more of a thuddy sound, so... I don't like changing my heads. It's expensive, too. But I'm also using the Minel brand cymbals. Uh, really taking a liking to those, especially uh, this dry, thin crash over here. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, so when I was, like, first coming up in the drums, uh, every time I played on some old ratty kit that someone had in their garage, I loved the sound of it. The the dust on the drums, the dead heads. They had this just jungly kind of thuddy-ish sound. So I've just, over the years, grown to like it. I used to play on all broken cymbals, actually, um, for years, and I really liked the sound of it. Yeah, you got to have some grit to it, right? Actually, uh, Staten Moore, when I was watching his DVDs and he was doing all his New Orleans stuff, um, he was just had his little, I can't remember what he called it, he has his own little signature um, tambourine thing going on. It's just got this thuddy. Just kinda, I just like a funky, gritty sound, so yeah. That's why I don't care for a lot of the, the, the stuff these days, all the drum replacement. I don't feel like you get the same sound when you replace the drums that you do with natural drums. Oh, more cameras, man. That's like three times I've set this camera. Mehmet, uh, dang, I started out on the Rockstar, bro. Yep, I had that thing for years. I spray painted it and everything, and those toms sounded, <laughs> those things were like thudding like all hell. I remember when I was playing in a, in a band, uh, this one dude was like, bro, how are you playing on that drum set? Because my heads were dented. They sounded like cardboard. <laughs> well, yeah, dude, I love it. That's awesome. Right, I'm gonna have to. Uh, we getting pretty close to the end of the stream here. 
you guys got any more questions about what I'm doing, you want to learn anything, let me know. And also, if you have not checked out or subscribed to the channel, check it out. Every week I leave a community post. You can request me to go over certain things in the live stream. I set up lessons every week. Most of it's your choice. And if uh, no one has any suggestions, I'll probably do some more four-pedal stuff. I'll get into how I do flam rudiments and such over this. When you get the time, let's see. And no, I will for sure. I'm going to check it out today. As soon as I'm done with the stream, I'll put it on when I'm kind of uploading all my footage and getting it situated because I, I like to cut up the stream. And I go over the stream, and uh, I will leave, what do you call it, uh, chapter markers. So, oh, I just got a subscription. Thank you, man. appreciate it. Thank you. But uh, what do you call it? So I go over and put all the chapters in the stream. So if you missed anything, you got all the lesson material and anything we talked about and whatnot and kind of some highlights and cool grooves. So I know it's an hour-long stream, and every time I watch somebody stream, I'm trying to figure out where they're at if they don't have the chapters. But I do that every week for you. So, yeah. Other than that, I'm going to kind of just bang out some drumming at the end, and we're going to call it a day. I want to thank everyone, though, for joining. TZ, thanks for coming out. Serge, always a pleasure, man. appreciate everything. All right, y'all, I know you're not there, but thanks, dude. New, Michael, appreciate everything. And I don't remember the name on the recent subscription. Thank you so much for subscribing. Oh, thank you, TZ. I appreciate that a lot, man. I'm trying to get this channel rolling. Let's do it. Thank everyone for coming about. Thanks, TZ. Thanks, Serge. 
Anyone else who's out there, thanks for watching. I appreciate everything. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video. I'm here every Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going over drum lessons and anything else you want to talk about. I'll see you next week. Thanks again.